Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and I just want to speak about sort of a niche uh, use of closures and whatnot. Um, just kind of going down sort of my weird experimentation in combining sort of weird OOP concepts with weird functional programming concepts to create interesting ways to do things that you could just do in easier ways. Okay, so basically in JavaScript you could already make a class and then instantiate instances of that class. Once upon a time, with old school functions, you could do like function ninja, and then this would be this. You could use this to instantiate a a a an object essentially. So like this name equals Ryu, and you could literally use this the same way as a class. So you could just be like new ninja. Okay. Um, and you basically would create your sort of classical sort of instance of an object. Arrow functions were created to separate itself from that. So in the sense that you no longer can use it as a constructor function. Um, you can use it to create objects. So I could do something like this, you know, so say, uh, const ninja equals, um, this. no parameters and then return literally return an object with all the properties that I want inside of it you could do that that's one option but I'm gonna give you another option where you can actually use the function an arrow function which is not meant to be an object constructor in a sense as an object through closures so essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep the inner scope of the function instance alive uh, through child functions Okay, so so let's create a ninja. So if I were to do like const ninja const, and then we'll say, hey, when you do run this function, you pass in name. Okay, so const name of the ninja is going to equal this. Uh, we'll say name. Oh, that is that won't work. Uh, const my name. equal name okay and then we'll say const uh, you know ninja stars so their inventory of ninja stars they start off with 10 ninja stars and then we can create all these functions okay so again notice I'm not using the this keyword because there's no underlying object that the functions attached to like the old school function syntax. They are just variables that are scoped within running this function. And in the instance of running the function. Um, so then I'll just create a functions to deal with this and then say we call we'll have a function called get stats. So const get stats equals Just basically console.logs. My name and stars. So that way you can see it. And again, these variables are accessible because since this function's made within this function, these variables are in scope for this function. So you'll see what happens. And again, if you saw my video on closures, you kind of know where this is going. And that should be. Yeah, get state or get stats. I want that to be. Okay, and then we'll do another variable to throw a ninja star const throw star equals and this what this will do is a console.log throws throws star and then it's going to decrement stars stars decrement and basically this will return an object but instead of having the properties in the object as well so in the previous one I was just saying hey return an object with all the properties and methods I'm only going to return the methods in this object so get stats 
and throw star. Okay, and then that's 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 it. Okay, so even though this is an arrow function, watch how I can use this. So we're gonna say const Ryu. You know Ryu wasn't the ninja, but from Street Fighter. But we'll bear with me. Const uh, Ryu equals the result of the function ninja, which is gonna be that object. And again, it's not a constructor. That's why I don't have to use the new keyword. It's just a function. And it's going to return me this object with these methods. But now I can do, let's do, first I'll console.log the actual variable, Ryu, so you'll see that it doesn't have the properties in the object. But then, if I do Ryu.getStats, I run one of those functions, I could view those properties. Ryu dot throw star to show that when he uses it, it it, it affects those properties, and then we'll do Ryu get stats again. And even more fun, we'll make another ninja, Shinobi, who was a ninja, if you play a lot of video games. It's also going to equal a the result of ninja, and then we'll do shinobi dot get stats, and you'll see like should have a separate set of stats because it's a separate instance of that function, and then we had to pass in a name, didn't we? Yeah, we had to pass in a name here. So Ryu Shinobi. Okay, so save. So I'm basically creating separate instances. Um, in, or functionally, it operates the same way, but really I'm creating an object that only really has two functions in it. So again, we'll, we'll see that in the console log. Uh, node functions.js. Seven two constant variable. Where did I did I declare these as const? Yeah, I need to change these to. I need to change this to star. I mean, change that to let. Save. There we go. So see what happens is we um, wait that do get sets again. Throw star. Oh, I didn't invoke the function. Save and then I need to invoke the function here. There we go. But just to show you what we did so far, so you see when we get what we got back was just an object with two functions. So the name and the the number of stars property are in that object. Yet I'm still able to access them with the function. Because the function, when the function was created, when we returned that array, that, that object, these variables were still in scope. So long as that function exists, those variables will still be in scope for that function with the values that they had, which was Ryu and 10. So let's follow this. So what happens is we run, we create Ryu. So again, Ryu is literally just an object with two functions. But if I run the getStats function, I do see, I, I do have access to those properties, Ryu 10. And the cool thing is, unlike here, I, ha I have no direct access to those properties. So if I didn't create you functions to access or do anything with those properties, you cannot manipulate those properties. So if you wanted to create like private, really private values that people outside of, that people can't access by any other way than the functions you gave them, this is not a bad way of doing it. Okay, with a class, I mean, right now, I think they're gonna be adding sort of public stats the JavaScript soon but here you can literally do it already you can basically set up all your inside stats as private that they're only accessible by these internal functions that are passed by this function so that's kind of cool okay throw star uh, Ryu 9 so basically he throws a star he runs that throw star function so see now he only has nine stars but then we ran another instance of the, sh of the, the ninja function and see shinobi is a completely separate ninja Okay, so every time I run the function, essentially creating a new instance, this new sort of bubble, this new closure. And so essentially you just have the same effect as creating a ninja. Okay, um, as, as if I created like a ninja class, or I use an old ES5 function as a constructor, or if I had just passed in an object. But the cool thing is if I had passed in the object, you could directly edit the my name and stars 
but this way you can only edit it with the functions I give you the only accessibility you have to the properties of ninja are within the functions I give you so if I don't give you functions to do it you can't do it um, which is kind of cool because I don't think yeah right now I'm pretty sure there is no private let me see here let me let's, let's just double check um, yeah, I just don't need this window anymore. And so private class variables JavaScript. Did they add this in there yet? I know there was discussion of doing so. Did they do that? New private class fields, how to use them. Yes, yeah, this is coming this year. Okay, do, 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 do. ES6 introduced JavaScript, but they can be too simplistic. So is likely to be added ES10. Private fields are currently supported in Node JS12. Okay, so that you could use them to some some extent. Okay. Oh, uh, pop-ups. Go away, pop-up. There we go. Okay, let's see what the syntax would be, just so you can see kind of what the same what you would need to do to get the same effect. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you mark it as private? This, that type, constructor name, anonymous. Now I get all this, it's just standard class stuff, classes and subclasses. We get all that, static methods, we get all that. Where's the private stuff? New class fields. Oh, okay, so I got it. So basically one thing they're gonna add is that you no longer have to do all this stuff in the constructor. So that was one thing that kind of annoyed me because I know in other programming language, I didn't have to do that. I could just declare the variables within the body of the class I didn't have to actually declare all my properties in the constructor. Not a bad pattern, but at least now you won't have to do it anymore. That's pretty cool with all the this and this and this. Uh, static class fields. Yeah, that I have been using in Node already. Um, that's basically the same thing as like a static method. Just a static, it's a variable that's on the class, not an instance of the class. Here we go, private. What's the syntax? Uh, a, all properties in the SX classes are public by default and can be examined and modified. And food, yeah, yeah, so how do you make it private? What is a syntax? I mean, you can essentially just do what I did and get the same effect. Okay, you just use a hash fields by using the hash prefix and that makes it private. And all that means is that you can't access it, it outside of the class. So you'd have the same effect as the function I just made where basically the property you can't access the properties only by using the functions that are built in. So if you want, you have to use a getter or setter function to to manipulate and work with those properties. So even if this wasn't being added to JavaScript this year, you can do it with this pattern. You can do it with arrow functions in this way, which you could technically do with any kind of function in this manner. But it's kind of a interesting way of doing things. So. Um, yeah, no, I thought I just thought this was exciting. I get excited about little geeky code stuff. Mm -hmm.